Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this Enfocel Investor Webinar, which is organized together with Investor. My name is Marku Ellila, I'm the CEO of Enfocel, and in the next roughly 40 minutes or so, I will try to help you to understand more about the company Enfocel and the way that we aim to power the Internet of Things and the revolution happening around that. At the end of the presentation, you will have a chance to um, get some answers to your questions that you can enter during the presentation on the chat window that you have in front of you. As soon as I can get the slides to move forward, I can start the presentation. Just a moment. In the meanwhile, I can tell you roughly about uh, the contents of the presentation. I will be saying a few words about the basic reasoning of why you should invest in Enfocel. I go through our story our history. I'll talk about the mega trends happening in the world that are supporting our growth. I will also then describe the market opportunity coming out of that and then move on to giving you some details about our technology, the customer cases that we have been involved in and how we see our competition in the world. And then uh, I'll describe the business model which is quite innovative and uh, tell you about the team that uh, makes all this happen. Um, and then what's important for you as an investor is the figures and uh, financial estimates. I'll cover those towards the end and then uh, describe to you the equity offering that we are uh, presenting to you. And Towards the end of the presentation, I hope that you will be able to appreciate uh, the way that Enfocel, with its unique technology of thin and flexible batteries, enables a tapping into the explosive growth of the Internet of Things. I hope I can also convince you that uh, Enfocel technology will be able to bring Internet of Things or the industrial internet to places where it has been very difficult to place and reach uh, with present technology. And in um, essence, what we are aiming to reach with the campaign that we are running currently together with uh, Investor is to uh, find about 800,000 euros of funding in order to ramp up our sales and marketing efforts to ensure quality controls of the products and help our licensed manufacturers to uh, reach uh, smooth production that will meet the growing demand that we see uh, taking place. And we also want to have more owners. We want to have a wider investor base so that we are prepared to a potential public listing in the near future. And we believe that we are offering shares with a high value potential. Okay, let's look at our story. First of all, some of the uh, very basic information of the company. We are a supplier of customized battery technology. We are a part of the printed electronics industry. And in the past 10 years, we have developed a printable, thin and flexible, and also eco-friendly product, which is called a soft battery. It can be used as a power source in many IoT and wearable electronics products and applications. 
the core technology that we have developed has been tried, it has been tested, it has been patented, and it has been paid for. We have spent about $10 million to develop and finalize this technology. And the basic R&D does not require any further funding. The history starts at the Helsinki University of Technology a bit more than 10 years ago. And the company started its active operation in 2005. The first patent was granted in two years after that. And then um, we have done uh, validation of high speed manufacturing capability in 2009. We have started the first commercial delivery six years ago and uh, we made the first license agreement uh, with a manufacturer in China in the same year. Um, two years ago, we started active collaboration with two semiconductor manufacturers. And uh, a year after that, we started uh, working on wireless disposable sensors for the medical or healthcare sector. And as we speak, uh, we have license agreements on three continents. Uh, the countries um, are Belgium, China, Spain, the UK and USA. Let's take a look at the megatrend that is supporting our growth. That megatrend is called the Internet of Things or industrial internet, if you like. It is the power behind the next industrial revolution. And we are claiming that uh, there are key segments in Internet of Things where it is difficult to build the connectivity without access to thin and flexible batteries to power up these difficult uh, devices. According to one leading analyst uh, agency, there will be 34 billion devices connected to the internet in four years' time, and that will be more than three times the amount uh, last year. And it's our conviction that these thin and flexible batteries will follow the growth of the IoT. Here you can see the growth of the IoT in graphical representation. The light blue graph on the top shows how the most rapidly growing segment of the internet uh, has already for a couple of years been the Internet of Things. And uh, in three years time, we expect that there will be three times as many uh, devices in Internet of Things, then there are smartphones and other devices altogether. So all this creates a very important market opportunity for IoT devices, and that means that there's a tremendous potential also for thin and flexible batteries. A few things about that opportunity that I would like to mention. Um, well, first of all, as I said, the Internet of Things market is now taking off and there are big markets then for applications and devices around it. Traditional battery technologies um, are difficult for IoT applications because of the hard shell metallic casings of those batteries. They are not comfortable for wearable electronics and they are very difficult for many applications like healthcare or sports where they are disturbing the performance of the equipment. Another leading analyst company, ID TechX, predicts that uh, the market for thin and flexible batteries will become an industry of 470 million US dollars in 10 years time from a fairly small market base uh, starting today. 
And uh, the difficulties that there are with metallic casings of traditional batteries, uh, they are the reason why we believe that thin and flexible batteries, they are exactly what Internet of Things needs to succeed. We also believe that now, after 10 years of uh, fervent development activity, this is just the right time for the Enfocel technology. Some of the basic facts behind that are all IoT devices, they need a power source. And thin and flexible batteries uh, match the requirements of many difficult applications. Price and power consumption of wireless devices has decreased so that the small batteries, thin batteries, have enough capacity to power up wireless devices now. They did not have enough of that capacity five years ago. Now, the collected information from these devices, they, they can be more readily utilized today than a few years ago because of the growth of the cloud services and the availability of cloud services to store that enormous amount of information. Also, the number of smartphones and tablets has grown tremendously in the last 10 years. And uh, that is the way that these IoT devices with our batteries are connected to the world that takes place through smartphones and tablets. And also writing the software code for these applications has become fast and inexpensive with present day tools. So all these added together, they are leading to the situation where Enfocel soft batteries are coming to the market at the very right time at as we speak. The target industries that are the most uh, interesting for Enfocel products are quite uh, diverse and the needs of uh, different applications, they kind of vary in terms of the power needed, the lifetime of the devices, lifetime of the batteries, the thickness or thinness of the device, the cost, reliability, flexibility, etc. Um, we have analyzed these markets and worked together with major players in those segments. And uh, we have found that the most lucrative markets for this technology are healthcare, sports and logistics. And their smart packaging is a key word also for the logistics use of these devices. Then let's take a look at the technology um, in a few moments. First of all, as I said, the core technology of Enfocel soft batteries has been tried and tested and patented already. We have a patent portfolio that includes several patent families and that uh, they are uh, valid in key market areas covering Europe, USA, and China. These patents, they, they contain uh, proprietary applications in things like the battery structure, materials and chemicals utilized in the batteries, the production methods, and the connections uh, from the battery to the devices. And uh, what we do uh, as a company, one of our most important revenue streams now and in the future is supplying the battery materials, including chemicals and other materials, to licensees. I'll come back to this in a moment uh, when I talk about the business model. Um, but we provide these chemicals and materials to our licensees and we use carefully selected subcontractors helping us to do so. Then, as a matter of a few small examples, I will go through some cases where we have been working together with customer, 
developers and partners in creating some interesting devices. Some of the important uh, collaborators for the company are from different parts of the world. Uh, just to mention some American companies, Qualcomm, a leader in mobile semiconductors, Identiv, a security solutions uh, provider, Sintel, Zymox Technologies, then semi semiconductor industry players, a major one, NXP, the former uh, Philips semiconductor division in, ne in the Netherlands, Nordic Semiconductor in Norway, um, then some of our license holders, Quad Industries in Belgium, Printed Electronics Limited in the UK, and some other collaborators like PA Consulting in the UK, and Finnish collaboration has uh, been started with the Kauniala Private Hospital, um, BTT, and uh, a software company called Arctic Connect. The first case that I want to describe to you is something that we have started together with the Kauniala Hospital a few months ago, and it has to do with remote health monitoring. We have started a project together with Kauniala uh, to develop a multipurpose sensor that is flexible, uh, simple to use for the user and the personnel of the care facility, and um, it is integrated into skin attachable patches in such a way that uh, they help monitor the vital signs of elderly people living at home, extending their uh, possibilities to live at home. And this reduces the healthcare cost, uh, cuts down the unnecessary visits to health centers and also uh, the presence of personnel at the home of the elderly. Another example is uh, a wireless temperature logger. Here we are talking about the logistics uh, segment that I mentioned in the beginning. We have developed in collaboration with NXP, the semiconductor company, a wireless temperature logger uh, together also with Identive that I mentioned. It can be used for pharmaceutical or medical cold chain uh, monitoring. For instance, um, following up on the cold chain uh, that a blood bag has experienced during the transportation. Uh, it can also be used for monitoring cold chain for food and other perishable uh, goods. And there's a consortium um, that has been working on uh, demonstration kit, uh, which has uh, capabilities uh, also to bring the product uh, into uh, mass production phase. Um, and currently uh, the demonstration system uh, will be ready for presentations at several trade fairs during the uh, second half of this year, starting very soon. Then another example of uh, a device that we have uh, developed uh, together with our partners, um, a golf sensor, uh, which in general uh, can also be used for um, other sports. Uh, we did this in collaboration with Qualcomm and uh, we have continued the collaboration with Nordic Semiconductor. Um, this is a uh, disposable sensor patch that can be attached on sports equipment and in the case of golf it measures the speed of the golf uh, golf club head at impact moment uh, with the ball and also measures the uh, different uh, club head angles uh, at the time of impact. We have also developed an algorithm which uh, translates the collected data into sensible information for the golfer. And we expect that uh, we will be able to provide a license to a uh, major player 
in the Gulf or wearables industry in the next 12 months. Then a couple of words about competition. Um, Amphocell possesses technology which is very strong compared to the uh, competition. Our com main competition currently is uh, with two companies. One of them is called the Blue Spark Technologies, based in Ohio, USA. They manufacture uh, individual batteries and uh, they have their own production capacity, which also means that uh, they have some limitations as to the scalability of the business. They are tied to their own equipment. Um, and they have licensed their know-how from another company. Imprint Energy in California is another company uh, that has entered the market. They uh, have their own technology. They have less patents so far compared to Enfocel. But if we compare the specifications of the batteries from these different suppliers, uh, we can clearly see that Enfocel has the highest peak current and we also have the highest capacity per area in the industry. And both of these things, they contribute to a very smooth connection and usage of Bluetooth technology, which is the key technology that is used to connect these IoT devices with smartphones and laptops. Then a couple of words about the Enfocel business model. Uh, the background to that is uh, that uh, our revenues employing this business model, they have been growing steadily in the last uh, three years. And uh, our focus on the IoT and the IoT related devices uh, is expected to help us multiply our revenue in the near future. Well, the business model is such that we are basically a business-to-business -business, uh, company. We provide technology for the thin and flexible batteries to licensees and manufacturers in all parts of the world. And these companies, they in turn, they offer products using our technology to their own clients. We just, just speed up the process by developing and supplying um, the technology to these companies, but we also develop sensor devices that are boosting uh, the acceptance of um, the technology in the market. All these devices that we are involved with, they are based on the Enfocel thin and flexible battery technology <clears throat> for IoT applications. And then most of the clients that are using these devices for their business are in the consumer business. So the, the demand for Enfocel battery technology is driven by consumer behavior. We have four primary revenue streams. And those are related with batteries and devices. The first two are uh, connected with devices. First of all, we do development projects uh, for these brand owners, the end customers of the uh, devices in IoT. That's one of the major revenue streams today. We provide prototypes and help uh, these uh, companies to bring devices to the market. We are also planning to introduce selected IoT devices to the market ourselves under our own brand. And uh, those we will not be manufacturing ourselves, but we will be subcontracting those, but taking the product responsibility. Then on, on the battery side, we have revenue streams from royalties and other license payments and 
from the sales of battery materials. The revenues have been growing and we believe that our focus presently on the Internet of Things devices will lead to the multiplication of our revenues in the near future. Here is like a graphical illustration of the business model. I will not go into this detail, but uh, you can see the arrow in the middle uh, showing those four revenue streams that I mentioned. Um, they point, the arrow points to the two kinds of customers we have. We have the battery manufacturers, we have the device uh, manufacturers and the device uh, business owners. And both of those, um, they can have consumers as their customers. Um, okay, then we start coming to the investor-related uh, information. And uh, before you make an investment, you have to bear in mind that there are also risks involved. We don't think that these should deter you from making an investment into our company, but our board of directors and the management, they have uh, analyzed the markets and our future performance. Mm, but we have to tell you that the future is unknown but, and there are some risks involved in making an investment in a company, company like ours. And those have to do with our estimations of the market, uh, the management of growth, uh, financing, uh, opportunities uh, with the behavior of our partners, um, uh, our capabilities to supply, uh, depending on how we can source our um, technology, and then changes uh, in personnel and technology. That brings us to the greatly talented team that we have in place. Uh, we are a small company currently, uh, but with the six highly talented people that we have on board, we believe that we can make all this growth happen with the scalable business model that I just described. We also have a very um, experienced and recognized board of directors on board. <clears throat> a quick uh, list of the people. You can see six people working uh, and three members of the board of directors. I have a long experience in technology industry. I started uh, as a researcher in particle physics. I have a PhD from um, Helsinki and uh, I was working for several years at CERN in, in Geneva, Switzerland before joining the first technology companies, uh, the ones that uh, I spent the most time with were Nokia, uh, Valmet and Nextrom. Um, but a couple of years ago I learned about Enfocel and I got really excited about uh, the product and the opportunities that uh, are lying ahead of us. And that's uh, when I decided to join and uh, buy uh, a share of the company. And you can see that I'm a major shareholder currently. Eero Suomalainen is our technology guru, is in charge of the development of the technology of production and environmental issues. He's been with the company for four years and he also has a long career with Nokia. He's been working on batteries and electronics uh, for the past 30 years and um, he has the same uh, university background as many of us in out of the Helsinki University of Technology. He's also a shareholder. Anja Talo from the same school. Uh, she has a higher uh, degree. Uh, she worked uh, as a researcher for 15 years at the university before joining the company 10 years ago and, and she is responsible for the sales and marketing. And then uh, our business controller, administration, Arya, highly uh, experienced uh, manager. 
And then uh, Hong Yan Ning, who is a product development engineer. Uh, she has a Master of Science from the same university. She has uh, that degree in wood science and technology. And she is working on um, the production, testing, documentation and quality control. And then Jonas uh, has an academic background in the University of Ohl, which is, um, like many people are saying, that it's the home of the mobile phone in the world. So he, he has the right background for the IoT device development. And he's been uh, involved in many of these uh, sensor projects that uh, I told you about. And then our board, our chairman, is Mr. Yomi Heinonen, who has more than 30 years of experience in global technology business. Um, he has led several companies in Switzerland. He's been a CEO uh, of uh, uh, Plumenta and many, uh, a couple of listed companies and a long career in management positions at Nokia. Uh, He's uh, currently a partner in a couple of other companies and uh, a board member also in Zurich-based companies. He has uh, a master's degree from the Tampere University of Technology and he's a major say, shareholder of the company. And then last but not least, Antti Kivima is a member of the board. He is a very seasoned and experienced leader and advisor in many Finnish um, international companies. Uh, he has uh, experience with uh, IPOs and uh, he has raised funding uh, in major international industrial projects. He also holds a master's degree from Helsinki University of Technology. Then um, I'd like to concentrate on the figures that we foresee for the company for the next five years. First, uh, the sales estimates and then uh, profit and loss statement, looking also at the recent history. The sales estimates we foresee in the four revenue streams that I mentioned earlier. Uh, the customer-driven device development projects, we don't expect that to be a major revenue stream, although at the moment it is uh, the major, the most important contributor to our revenue. But uh, we expect that uh, the major growth will take place for the IoT devices, especially uh, making a major contribution to our revenue um, in three years' time. The technology licensing for the batteries and the battery materials will be growing in the same pace uh, with the uh, growth of our market share and the IoT in general. As you can see, we have an aggressive growth plan uh, where we will be reaching the 10 million euro level in about uh, three years time. You may be interested also in how this uh, looks like as a distribution between the different revenue streams and this is in five years time we expect that the uh, most important revenue streams the two most important ones are the low-cost IoT devices and that is mainly in the healthcare sector and then uh, the battery materials will be a major contributor as well and the sales estimates in a graphical format the same numbers we saw uh, before they are indicated here. So we will be uh, approaching the 10 million euro level in three years time. And then finally, uh, let's take a look at the profit and loss predictions. Um, as you can see, the revenue has been growing uh, steadily over the past uh, three years, taking into account the estimate for this year. Uh, and um, we expect that the uh, investment into technology will start bearing fruit so that uh, next year our operating profit uh, will be 
minimally negative and uh, in 2018 there is a, already a very strong cash flow in the company and with the present uh, funding campaign we believe that uh, we will be able to carry the company over in such a way that uh, the organic growth can be reached uh, without uh, additional injection of funds into the company. However, we believe that there is a strong case for speeding up the um, growth at uh, a moment uh, within the next two years and that can be the potential time for the uh, public listing that was mentioned in the beginning. So just a couple of details to close off uh, the webinar uh, or the presentation. There will be questions after that. Um, uh, just a description of the funding that we are seeking and how it is structured as an offering for equity. We are seeking 800,000 euros in order to increase our uh, sales, speed up the sales growth and expand our business in the IoT market. We will be allocating those funds for strengthening our resources in four key areas. Global marketing and sales, technology transfer capabilities towards our license holders and investments into systems and quality controls so that we can meet the growing demand and help our license holders to meet that demand. Uh, we do not need new investment for the core technology. And the offering is such that uh, in the investor driven campaign, uh, our range of investment is between 300,000 and 800,000 euros. And with that, we are offering uh, anywhere between about 4% to almost 10% of the company. The price per share is 40 cents. And with the number of existing shares, you can see that the pre-money valuation of the company is uh, short of 8 million euros. Um, and the funding campaign will be closing at the end of September. So there's still four weeks time before the end. So with those words, I close the presentation part of the webinar and I'm ready to answer questions that may have come up uh, in, the, in the chat window. Just a moment, I'm just looking those up. There's one question about how much energy can be stored in these batteries. So how often do you need to change them on average? Now there are two ways of answering that. The technical uh, way would be to talk about how many milliamp hours these batteries typically contain and I'll start with that. Uh, a typical battery that has been used in the IoT related devices lately uh, has about 40 to 50 milliamp hours, uh, which is a capacity which is maybe one-fourth of a typical hard-cased metal coin cell battery. Um, so these are have smaller capacity, but if you look at the practical use cases for the applications that uh, we have designed devices for, um, the smart labels for uh, cold chain monitoring, uh, temperature logging, they typically are expected to uh, be able to last for about half a year, between 6 and 12 months with the battery from by the Enfocel technology. They are fairly low consuming devices, so the design criteria are between 6 and 12 months. Uh, then if you think of some other devices uh, that we have designed for sports, they are also um, 
it is possible to make them run for several months uh, and six months is a criterion for one particular application I'm thinking of. Uh, and then um, those devices that are actively using Bluetooth as the connectivity to um, smartphones, uh, they um, need to be designed with a bit higher battery changing um, uh, frequency. And uh, for instance, in the healthcare sector, uh, for a kind of continuous monitoring of uh, the vital signs of a person with a, a skin attachable sensor, um, the expectation value is that uh, the battery should be changed once a week, which is a good time uh, for something that is sticking on a person's skin to be changed and moved to another location. Um, and then uh, I think that kind of covers uh, both aspects of how much energy can be included in a battery. Then I have another question here. Uh, what kind of timing do we have in mind regarding the uh, IPO? As I mentioned, uh, uh, the time where uh, another boost into the growth, uh, speed of growth might make sense uh, without any um, um, kind of commitment at this phase. I think what we are looking at as a potential timing would be about uh, two years from now, maybe a bit less. Then I have one question about the competition from smart watch manufacturers like Swatch, uh, which is also uh, selling its technology to the IoT industry. I see these wrist wearables as a complementary uh, offering to thin and flexible devices. Um, and I think that there will be a market segment available for both. Now people have uh, a long tradition or, of wearables that they are wearing on their wrist. So it's a natural place to place some electronics that are connected to the Internet of Things. Uh, but for many things, especially in healthcare and uh, sports, it is not the optimal location to measure things. The optimal location to measure performance in sports or the uh, vital signs of a person would be close to those human organs uh, which are generating um, you know, the uh, signals that are being measured, like the heart or the lungs or the muscles or any other organs that are being monitored. Um, and in order to do that, um, it is better to place the measurement device on the skin of a person. And if you try to do that, then you need to have something that is also comfortable to wear and is not uh, containing any hard objects. So a thin and flexible and preferably a soft uh, patch would be the perfect sensor for those kinds of applications. So I think we are a complementary technology to the wrist wearables. Uh, currently, I don't see any other questions on the screen. So, unless there's something coming up, it would be time for me to thank you very much for your attention. I hope to hear from you uh, at the end of the presentation. You can see the contact information to me and uh, this material will also be uh, available on the investor pages and uh, also this recording 
can be accessed later on. So thank you very much and uh, all the best. Hope to see you as our shareholder very soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.